Welcome everyone to our 2020 SEIU 721 State of the Union. With enthusiasm, I would like to say we are very excited to have everyone join us on the call today. We'll get started soon, so just sit tight. It takes a few minutes to get everyone on the line. Wow, I'm seeing more and more members joining. Let's give a shout out to Riverside, to Tri-Counties, to LA County, to LA City, to the clinics, and all of our nonprofits who makes up all of our members here in Southern California. Tonight, we'll be hearing from our members across all of the regions about our plan to tackle this historic moment. Let's go back to tackle. I think tackle means to confrontation, challenge, attack. I like to say our plan, we want to throw down in this historic moment. Speaking tonight, we have our outstanding president, Bob Schoonover, our spirit and skillful treasurer, David Green, our passionate secretary, Lillian Cabral, of course, our inspirational executive board members, Rosa Castro and Shalinda Bernard, and also with the willpower and the motivation of our chief of staff, Gilda Valdez. Thank you for joining us and, take, and thank you for your patience as we will get everyone on the line, so just be patient. I'd like to say also, thank you for all stepping up at this moment. SEIU 721 members have been instrumental in keeping our communities afloat during this crisis. Let's go back to the word afloat. Afloat means uh, staying afloat during a rough storm. I like to say keeping our communities resilient during this crisis. Speaking of heroes, you all are heroes and you should not forget that. We'll be talking tonight about our strategy to make sure that our heroes have not been forgotten as the state opens up. The winds of change are in the air and it's our job to lead the charge toward a more and just equitable world. Again, thank you for your patience as we get more of our brothers and sisters on the line. Again, Thank you for your patience. Everyone is getting on the line and we will begin very soon. Because of our unity and strength, we're in a great position to seize this moment and make real gains for working people. The rest of the world is starting to understand what we've been saying all along. Southern California works because we do. 721 has a drum major instinct a desire to lead. And we're going to fight like hell to make sure that message sticks and leads to a positive change. You know, tough times don't last, tough teams do. And SEIU is an organization that has quality that creates demand. It's an organization that has change uh, with innovation, but it takes teamwork to make it happen. We'll be starting Soon with our president, Bob Schoonover, and our treasurer, David Green, our secretary, Lillian Cabral, our executive board members, Rosa Castro, and Shalinda Bernard, and our chief of staff, Gildo Valdez. We'll be getting updates and report backs from all regions, talk about what our union is doing to prevent furloughs and layoffs, as well as upcoming legislation and the November ballot. So, thank you everyone for your patience. We're going to get started now. My name is Michael Green, and I am the Regional Director for the LA County Region, and I'll be your MC this evening. We're gonna hear from our leaders across our locals tonight, and beginning with our president of SEIU Local 721, Bob Schoonover. Bob, take it away. Thank you so much, Michael. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to join this evening. Welcome to our State of the Union. The year is 2020 and we're not even halfway done. And boy, oh boy, what a year it's been. The COVID-19 pandemic has hit America very hard. As frontline workers, we know just how bad it is and continues to be. Bottom line, the failure at the national level is a national shame. 
Especially when COVID-19 first hit, the powers to be put lives at risk and failed to provide us with the proper PPE, period. Yet throughout this crisis, the members, you, have gone the extra mile. You are the heroes, literally, that have kept our society functioning. You still do every day. This is what we mean when we say we are the safety net. Without us, it all falls apart. Now we're living in a new reality and it's still a very tumultuous time. This is a defining moment for our union. We are rising to the challenge of this moment head on. Pandemic, economic depression, racial injustice. We are now on the offensive. We are ready to fight and never give up. That's why we're fighting hard for the HEROES Act. That's $1 trillion from the federal government that helps us to avoid layoffs and furloughs. Also, at the state level, schools and communities first, which means more funding for California's safety net. Also, in California, in our fight for racial, racial justice, we want to repeal Prop 209. This will bring back the protections of affirmative action to help ensure fair hiring and promotion process in the workplace. And we also have the equity campaign, demanding that our legislators here in California take bold action now to include ballot measures that raise revenue in this November's elections. Because we are at a crossroads, we can either rebuild an economy that works for billionaires, or we can create something that works for all of us and includes the middle class and improves the middle class. And that is also true that we must do this at the national level, not just at the state level. So let's be clear. It's time to vote out Donald Trump as president. As President Harry S. Truman once said, the buck stops here. Responsibility for our national response lies with our commander in chief. Well, now let's see, that's Donald Trump. COVID-19 response is still a catastrophe. There's been no real leadership from Trump, just a bunch of angry tweets. But to vote him out, we're going to have to fight. We're gonna to have to fight really hard. Everything we can do from letter writing, phone calls, text, social media, in the streets, car caravans, you name it. The good news is we have the public, we have the taxpayers, we have history on our side. People are outraged about the lack of PPE, and about how rich corporations got trillions and we get stuck with the bill. But now people are finally ready to speak up and rise up. People now see workers everywhere need justice, economic justice, racial justice, justice for immigrants, and housing justice. And they say that no hero is going to magically appear and save us. We are going to have to be our own heroes and we're going to have to fight. The Black Lives Matter movement understands this. Instead of waiting around for leaders to initiate action, they're taking action. And SEIU 721 is proud to join them. We know that the Black Lives Matter struggle for racial justice goes hand in hand with the labor movement struggle for economic justice. As the late Dr. Martin Luther King famously said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. It was just as true then as it is now. That's why we recently celebrated when the US Supreme Court ruled that the LBGT, 
LGBTQ community is covered under the 64 Civil Rights Act. That's why we celebrated when the court ruled to uphold sanctuary city laws. That's why we celebrated when the court ruled to block President Trump's attempt to end the DACA program, which protects all dreamers. As union members, we understand that the fight to improve our lives must include both fights at the workplace and outside of the workplace. We fight for something bigger than ourselves. When we fight, we win. We fight for justice for all working people. As I have said earlier, this is a defining moment in the history of our union. My question to you is, are you ready to join us and are you ready to fight? Let's bring it on. We're ready. Wow, that was awesome, Bob. Thank you very much. So if you're listening and you joined us late, don't worry. We'll have another opportunity to hear Bob's points. Our next speaker was invited to stand in for our Vice President, Linda Dent, who couldn't make it tonight. So please welcome our Chief of Staff, Gilda Valdez. Thank you, Michael. So um, I'm standing in for our Vice President, Linda Dent, who could not join us tonight, but she wanted me to personally deliver this very import important message on her behalf. For those of you who know Linda, you know that she's a fighter. And so when it comes to our union's position, we're going to fight. You're going to hear that word a lot tonight, fight. That's because the values we all hold dear are under attack. All of us need to be involved now and through this election and then after. I'll start with the city of Los Angeles. And I'm just going to go through a few points from each of the cities. The main point is, is the, the action that we have to take. I'll start with the city of Los Angeles. The mayor is proposing 26 days of furloughs. This amounts to about 10% pay cut. We sent a cease and desist letter to the general manager, but this fight has just started, and we need everybody with us. In tri-counties, it has its challenges, too. In the city of Santa Paula, they want mandatory furloughs of 54 hours and 2.6% pay, uh, pay cut. They want to cut vacation buyback from 80 hours to 40 hours. They want to temporarily suspend the sick leave incentive program. Okay, let's go to the inland region. The city of Riverside implemented rushed, unnecessary furloughs under the guise of an emergency action. We quickly pointed out that this is unlawful and we're not going to let them get away with ignoring our MOU. Now, Riverside County is requesting meetings around potential furloughs and layoffs. Other employers in the region also want to open up uh, our contracts and delay hard-won raises. Now, let's talk about LA County. The CEO just said their budget would eliminate 4,000 positions. It would also include 1,300 layoffs. Many employees would be bumped out of the positions and there would be demotions. If the county says cut back, what do you think we're going to do? We're going to fight back. Let me tell you how we stop all of these cuts. The way that we stop 90% of these cuts is that we get the HEROES Act passed. That's right. There is a way to stop this. We still have $1 trillion on the table. It's stuck in the U.S. Senate. We need to demand from Congress what we need. Local city and county leaders are throwing in the towel way too early. They're already making lists of who they're going to furlough. Not our union. We're on the offensive and we're ready to take them on to make this HEROES Act law and we need it now. We need every dollar proposed, not, watered, not a watered down version either. So it's time for us to flip the script for working people. It's outrageous that the richest corporations in America just got bailed out of over five, five trillion dollars. The money is there, they're just not using it to protect and help working people. It's insulting that the White House threatened us with bankruptcy instead of helping out states, counties, and cities. What kind of leader does that during the national crisis? Already 40 million people are unemployed because of COVID-19. We are in an economic depression. Cuts to public services will be devastated. 
will devastate our communities. It's our tax money. We need, to, we need to say where that money goes. Not to mention the majority of our union were the essential workers who have kept this country moving. If we're going to chop, we're going to chop from the top. As Dr. Martin Luther King said, no, we are not satisfied and will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. It's not just about money. It's about justice. It's about doing what's right for the nation. So I ask you all to roll up your sleeves, get out of your seat, and don't sit this moment out. We can't afford to. And in Linda's own words, it's on and cracking. Thank you very much. Wow, with such willpower, I like to say thank you, Gilda. These are challenging times, but our union is continuing to fight to support our members and the services we provide. Our next speaker is one of the most passionate advocates for working families in all of California. Brothers and sisters, our secretary, Lillian Cabral. Hello, brothers and sisters. I work at LEC USC Medical Center, AKA General Hospital, and I am your elected secretary, union. Our union voice during this pandemic has allowed us to fight for the equipment, policies, and the protection we need to stay safe on our jobs. But the fight isn't over. It's only ramping up. The power at the top want us workers to shoulder the cost of this economic fallout. Are we going to let this happen? Hell to the no. And now that they want to cut and furlough our jobs, not on our watch. Are we going to sit back and take it? Hell to the no. Now we're on the offense. When they cut one of us, they're attacking all of us. It's time to fight back brothers and sisters and hold those in power accountable. Every month we are training up stewards to lead these fights. Sign up to be a steward. Sign up your coworkers to be a steward. Don't stop there. Create your account at SEIU721.org. We need to sign up for emails and text alerts. We need every member to be informed involve and be ready to take action. I can't get off this line, brothers and sisters, without talking about what happened to George Floyd. It breaks my heart. Police brutality against our, brother, our black brothers and sisters in particular, the people of color. It's nothing new to us. I grew up east of the LA River and I've seen it with my own eyes, but this time it feels different. We have this momentum to make long lasting changes. We cannot stay silent on racism. We must speak out against it. We must have those hard and uncomfortable conversations with each other. We cannot let things go back to normal. Seeing George Floyd killed by the police officers was the straw that broke the camel's back. George Floyd didn't create a moment he created a movement, Black Lives Matter. This movement is a call to action for every single one of us to break our silence. We must break out against racism everywhere. That's the heart and soul of this movement. Let the movement inspire us to do better for racial justice, economic justice, housing justice, immigration justice, for all. We need to ride this wave for justice and vote Trump the hell out. Thank you for listening and remember brothers and sisters, together we are union strong. Si se puede. You heard it, showing her passion. Thank you very much, Lillian. Our next speaker is going to take us through the lay of the land politically and how we're leading the fight for working families in 2020. Please welcome our treasure, David Green. Thank you, Michael. Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is David Green, and I've been a proud children's social worker for 20 years at the LA County Department of Children and Family Services. I also serve as your elected treasurer here at SEIU Local 721. I wanna to speak to you about two important points of who we are as a union 
and why we need your voices, your leadership, and energy more than ever. First, the campaigns our union is waging for economic and racial justice. And second, how we elect leaders at the local, state, federal, and retirement board level that share our values. Our union has always been the leader in the fight for justice. Today, more than ever, our counties, our cities need unions, and we need all of you. And after all, racism, sexism, and homophobia never take a day off. This means a fight for economic justice, racial justice, and changing society to make it a better place. SEIU led the way to make the fight for $15 an hour a reality. We helped light the spark that raised wages for hundreds of thousands of Californians. Now we're expanding that fight. SEIU 721 is leading the fight for justice in the gig economy with the Mobile Workers Alliance. We're helping workers at Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash fight for basic workplace protections, fair wages, and a union. We're also leading the fight for $15 an hour to help fast food workers win basic protections on the job and for a union, but we still have a lot of work to do. Our union believes that all workers deserve a voice at work, safety in the workplace, and to be compensated fairly for the work they do. As they say in the labor movement, an injury to one is an injury to all. Why do politics matter? SEIU 721 has also led the way in using our political strength to make changes in economic justice, the fight for racial justice, and electing those that share our values. W whether you love or hate politics, you all need to be involved in politics. With SEIU 721 and the Committee on Political Education, or COPE, our voices are not only heard, but we elect our bosses. Like my union brother Adolfo Granados always says, COPE is hope. Through a democratic town hall process, SEIU 721 members choose candidates for state and local offices in every region. Electing the right pro-worker candidates at every level is gonna be absolutely crucial as we try to protect vital services, our work, and our jobs coming out of this pandemic. But we need your voice, we need your energy to keep the pro-worker supermajority in Sacramento. To ensure funding for economic justice and protecting the safety net for all Californians, but especially those that are the most vulnerable. I wanna mention just a few of the key races we'll be targeting. In LA County, where 721 members have endorsed Herb Wesson for LA County Supervisor to replace Mark Ridley Thomas. Herb understands and supports working people and how to preserve the safety net. He's got the support of our 55,000 SEIU 721 members who work in the county. In the city of LA, we also need to work hard for David Rue and Mark Ridley Thomas for the LA City Council. We've got several Lacera board seats coming up this summer, and as many of you know, secure retirement is an issue near and dear to my heart. And this summer, we have a chance to send a message that it's an issue not just worth fighting for, but worth voting for. Finally, our international union hasn't formally endorsed for president, but I think Bob Schoonover summed it up perfectly. We need someone in the White House who will support working people instead of dismissing them, villainizing them, and attacking them. Let's face it, this is the most important election of our lifetimes. In the age of COVID and social distancing, we're going to need some different strategies for putting the heat on the street. Knocking on doors will be replaced by texting, calling, and a bunch of new techniques, including video, social media, and other technologies. Please look for your SEIU 721 slate cards in your region for all the election recommendations on key state, assembly, Senate races, and local races in the inland region, tri-counties, and Orange County. We need to get active and we need to get ready. It's gonna take all of us in this fight for racial and economic justice, but I know my brothers and sisters in SEIU 721, and I know we've never backed down from a fight. Audrey Lord said, your silence will not protect you. That's why now, more than ever, let's use our voices, let's use our energy to fight and win. Very spirited and skillful. David, we appreciate you. Our next speaker is joining us from the Tri-County region, the executive board member, Rosa Castro. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rosa Castro. I work for the Ventura Superior Courts. I'm proud to report that we've had several vic victories in the Tri-Counties region, including an additional 60 bankable hours for members in the County of Ventura to use as needed through the COVID shutdown. City of Ventura members voted to extend their contract to keep protections in place and avoid having to negotiate on takeaways. However, there are challenges too. 
such as mandatory furloughs and temporary suspensions of a sick leave incentive program for City of Santa Paula members. And for those at Gold Coast Transit District, we are fighting to reinstate $1.25 per hour of hazard pay that the employer proposed and then took off the table. And in Ventura County, we know how to put up a fight. Back in 2014, the Arnold Foundation, which is a group that's aligned with the Koch brothers, tried to put a Ventura County initiative on the ballot that would have taken away defined pensions for County of Ventura new hires, slowly shutting down contributions to our pension fund. Of course, we fought back. We took them to court and won. Defeating them was a huge victory because Ventura County was their testing ground to attack public sector pensions statewide. Now, there's another key fight we must take on across our union to help fund public services in all our counties. We must pass the Schools and Communities First California ballot proposition this November. The Schools and Communities First will reclaim more than $11 billion, that's billion with the B, for schools and communities by closing corporate tax loopholes created more than 40 years ago in Prop 13, forcing corporations and billionaires to pay their fair share of property taxes. This targets only big, rich corporations, not individual homeowners. Our Schools and Communities First campaign started long before we ever heard of the coronavirus, but its passage is even more necessary now. Cuts and furloughs are being proposed left and right because of lost tax revenue. And this is a huge chunk of money that would help city and county budgets throughout California. For example, in Ventura County, this initiative would provide an additional $88.5 million. And that's not just once, that's $88 million a year. Riverside would see an extra $182 million each year. San Bernardino County, $296 million every year. For LA County, it's a whopping $2.4 billion more per year. Let me be clear, we need to fight like hell to pass the Schools and Communities First Ballot Prop this November. So, when you start getting emails and text messages from our union to help pass Schools and Communities First, I need you to step up and take action with layoffs and furloughs and cuts already threatening our future, we all need to stand strong and fight for these funds. Every union worker who can vote needs to register to vote and make sure Schools and Communities First passes this November. Together, sisters and brothers, we can protect our communities, our jobs, and our future. Thank you, Rosa, in building momentum for our movement. We've got a great e-board, inspirational, always. We're going now to hear from another executive board member, Sherlinda Bernard from the Inland Region. Take it away. Good evening, everybody. My name is Shaylinda Bernard, and I'm an adult protective social worker for Riverside County. I'm here to report on what's happening in the Inland Region, as well as some of, our, some of the ways our union is fighting for working people. We've been busy in the Inland Empire trying to not only serve our communities, but protect ourselves. It's been a challenge, but our union, like always, has stepped up. We have been meeting with employers to secure, to secure remote work. We've also distributed thousands of masks and face shields throughout the region. In Riverside County, we're meeting bi-weekly with management to ensure everyone is protected and the hospital is prepared for a COVID-19 surge. Riverside courts reopened this week to the public with social distancing and safety protocols in place. And in San Bernardino County, we just ratified a new contract with wage increases across the board. I know it's been challenging, but through our union, we've been able to keep things on track. SEIU 721 members are on the front lines of not only the COVID-19 fight, but the fights for social, racial, and economic justice. This crisis has revealed to us just how fragile the safety net is and how easily it can fail, who it hurts the most when it fails. We're seeing unprecedented job losses and unprecedented numbers of people getting sick. It's bad for everybody, but it's especially bad for black and brown people who are disproportionately bearing the brunt of this crisis. 
This disease has revealed, has revealed fault lines in our society that are too obvious to ignore. And the recent murder of George Floyd at the hands of police brutality has caused those fault lines to fracture. The reality of systemic racism in this country has become impossible to ignore and people are demanding change. In Riverside, we held a, a candlelight vigil with Black Lives Matters IE. I was honored to have the chance to speak and represent our union in the fight for racial justice. In LA, we led the charge for labor to support Black Lives Matter and participated in a 2000 car caravan in honor of George Floyd. We no longer have to accept the status quo. We must demand and expect more. It's not just changing the way law enforcement behaves, but also changing the way we choose to allocate those resources. For the first time in decades, there is a wave of people demanding that we invest in the services that SCIU 721 members devote their lives to every day. We can't let this moment pass us by. We need to demand that our budgets reflect our values and the needs of our communities at the city, county, state, and federal levels. We've got to put the pressure on the Senate to pass the HEROES Act that will bring over $1 trillion to the state and local governments alone. I need everyone to be on the lookout for texts and e-blasts with targeted demands for our senators, and every single one of us must take action. Today's heroes cannot become tomorrow's unemployed. We need the federal government to bail out our cities and counties, not just the rich corporations. I wanna thank you all for listening to us and spending time with us this evening. Please be safe and remember to keep the pressure on for the Senate to pass the HEROES Act. Thank you, Shalinda, and thank you everyone for your remarkable remarks, your wisdom and your leadership. But we're in new territory right now, uh, the first time in all of our lifetimes. But as you heard our mantra, when we fight, we win and we will win. Now we want to turn things over to you, the members, and address some questions that have been submitted over the past two weeks. The first question comes to us from member Mike Contreras. He is an intermediate clerk in the county of Los Angeles. As a steward, the most asked question I receive from membership is, why are we facing layoffs when we can avoid it by giving concessions that the Board of Supervisors want with safeguards in place. And why not furloughs instead of layoffs like the city of LA? If the union has the ability to avoid it, why not move on it and negotiate in good faith with our employers? We have negotiated a great contract for 2019 through 2021. We can protect it with assurances from management. Unemployment doesn't pay dues. I'm going to let this uh, panelist answer the question. Bob? Thanks, Michael. And thanks for the question, Mike. I I'm really glad. It's really important that we deal with this question with everything that's going on. You know, when it comes to layoffs, furloughs, or other ways to mitigate the effects of the COVID-19 budget deficit, we're always looking to do whatever we can to protect jobs and our contracts. We must know though that good faith negotiations are a two-way street and in some instances we can only do as much as the employer or in this case LA County is willing to allow or what other union partners are willing to do along with us. Now, in, in the case of LA County, uh, I will say our bargaining policy committee, which is made up of the chairs of the last time we were in bargaining, actually reached an agreement, but it's a conditional agreement, to temporarily suspend county's matching contribution to the Horizons 457 Deferred Compensation Plan. This suspension of this match, though, would only go into effect if and when 
other county unions agree to the suspensions because we will only sacrifice if this is a shared sacrifice. Now to date, the other county unions who are negotiating as a coalition have not yet reached agreement with the county. We are confident that they will eventually follow our lead. This agreement will go a long ways toward averting layoffs, okay? Now rest assured, no matter where you work, if you're in Santa Barbara County or the, a city in Riverside County, we are and always will continue to do everything in our power to avoid furloughs, layoffs, or takeaways of any kind whenever possible. Thanks for the question. Thank you, Mike, Brother Mike Contreras uh, from LA County. Our next question comes from Christopher Irvin, an irrigation specialist. His question is, where are we with the stimulus for workers? What is the status? Is it unacceptable to have our hardworking union members foot the bill for this uh, COVID-19 pandemic costs, expenses, and budget shortfalls cannot be made up on the backs of our union members who have continued to answer the call. It has already had a huge negative impact on morale and the workforce with furloughs looming over our heads and set to commence next month. Make this right. Our next panelist, will be, uh, David Green, will answer this question. Great, thank you, Michael. That's a great question, Christopher. Um, right now, the HEROES Act has been passed by the House of Representatives. It needs to be taken up by the Senate. In California, our senators are on board, but as many of you probably know, the Senate's currently controlled by Mitch McConnell and the Republicans. So far, this faction of the Senate has used the COVID-19 crisis to give away hundreds of billions of dollars to big business while leaving crumbs for the working people and local governments. Mitch McConnell has said that he's not gonna take up any further stimulus packages for working families until after the 4th of July recess. Obviously, this is unacceptable. And rest assured, our SEIU brothers and sisters across the country are calling on their senators to support the HEROES Act. Our local 721 has conducted two call-in days. We sent over 65,000 messages to our members to call in the Senate to take up the HEROES Act, and we're gonna keep on fighting. So the question becomes, how can we as Californians amplify our message and increase pressure on the Senate? We recently uh, launched the Union Voices Project, which is our digital street team of SEIU 721 members who've taken on the role of making the voices of union members and union voters heard, whether on their own social media channels or through targeted digital actions directed specifically at lawmakers. If you'd like to join the team, all you need to do is text the word voices to the number 31996 to get signed up. I'll say it again. Just text the word voices to the number 31996 to get signed up. And thank you for your question. Okay, thank you, Christopher Irvin, the irrigation specialist. And I'd like to thank everyone who submitted the questions. I know we've had a lot of questions come in the last two weeks, but due to the amount of time, we can only consolidate and put these questions in a priority basis. Thank you again to all of our members who joined tonight. Remember, you are the union and you will shape what our future looks like. We've got a one in a lifetime generation chance to change the status quo. And this is for all members, not just some members. So let's do this. With a positive affirmation I would like to say is never let a bad situation bring out the worst in you. Be strong and choose to be positive and empowering. And with that, our program is concluded. Thank you all of the attendees and the speakers. And be safe and remember, when we fight, we win. Thank you all, brothers and sisters. Be safe and have a wonderful night. Thank you.